Hello everyone. Welcome you all to this new video. So finally the second exam which is the very very important exam that is uh, VLSI design and testing for sixth semester EC students has completed just now. So I hope that all of you have written the exam very well. So the these were the very two important subjects for the sixth sem that is uh, embedded systems and VLSI design and testing. Now after that we are having two professional elective courses. Okay. Uh, so under that uh, two exams are still pending which uh, which would be having five day delay. So the next exam is uh, an elective subject where uh, I am going to provide the videos if possible for digital image processing. Okay. Because this is the elective course which I have selected and uh, other subjects uh, related to this elective course I am not uh, going to do any videos or provide any stuff. Okay. So please don't ask in the comments about those subjects. So I'm clearly mentioning it in now only that is I'm going to do the videos on DIP that is digital image processing in a few amount of days. Okay. So that was the one thing I needed to inform. One more thing is that most of the people who are watching our, our videos or who are seeing our channel are not subscribing to our channel. Our subscribe rate is very less. All of you are watching the videos, giving nice, nice comments, liking the videos, but not subscribing our channel. So that's a very sad news. Please guys, please subscribe to our channel because 70% of our channel members are not subscribed. So please subscribe it and uh, stay updated. Okay. So these were the things. So now let us discuss with the question paper of uh, VLSI design and testing. So how was the paper guys? I wanted to ask you guys, please let me know in the comment section about how was the paper. I know that it was not as expected, but most of the questions which I had provided from the passing package have come in this paper. Okay. But the questions were a bit twisted, but it was not that difficult. Okay. So one by one, let us discuss now. So module one, one question for first A was compare CMOS and NMOS logic. So this was a direct question from module one in the conceptual videos. I've already covered this part and uh, I hope that most of you might be expecting this question because this was a normal question which was very simple it could be answered for five marks but this was they have asked it for level three i don't know why they have asked this for level three because uh, for five marks uh, if you write five differences it is well and good so if you are right if you had written more than six or seven differences it is very very well and good because there are high chances that you would be getting full five marks for that okay since this is a l3 question next one b with a neat diagram, explain the physical representation of transmission gate. So this was not expected question. Okay, this was a bit twist, twisted question, but not impossible to write. It was there in the syllabus. There is no chance for grace marks for this at all. Okay, so please don't expect for grace marks because the questions are from the syllabus only. But just thing is that they have twisted the questions. That's it. Okay, they have just twisted the questions. So this could be written that is uh, first if you write the complete explanation of transmission gate along with the symbol and circuit diagram and based on that if you draw the layout for transmission gate simple layout uh, without any uh, VDD and ground part those things and all are not required just diffusion and, uh, and polysilicon layer con uh, combination and if you write the physical representation of that easily you would be getting 5 marks okay. Next is uh, this I have already told you right this would be appearing so expression based questions see they have asked it design CMOS compound gate for the functions. So one is a direct expression. So they have asked two expressions. Each carries five marks. Okay. So they have asked it for a total of 10 marks. So this is an L3 question. So if you write only the diagram, it is not sufficient. You should be explaining a bit. Okay. That is if you, if you have written the logic design for this, after writing the logic design, just a few points of explanation that is in the pull up part and pull down part NMOS and PMOS transistors are connected in series or parallel for a, uh, multiplication and addition how it works and why this complement is used everything if you write it in detail easily you would be getting five marks okay for this one but this one was a bit twisted this they have asked it for xor gate okay because this expression you see here a bar b plus a b bar is for xor gate okay so if you write the xor gate cmos logic design it's well and good but some some people won't be knowing it so what they would be writing is they would be writing to write this directly but how to write it directly they have given two complements that is one is a complement and B complement. So while you write this uh, structure, you should be mentioning the first you should be writing the inverter. Then after that inverter, whatever output produced, that would be A bar and B bar. Okay. Then at the same way, you should be drawing the logic design. And at the output side, you should be considering one more inverter because we don't have one more complement here. Okay. So that complement is avoided. So that's why you should be drawing one more uh, 
inverter that would be complement of complement so that would be getting cancelled and this would be our final expression okay either this or the direct XOR gate CMOS logic design if you write it easily you would be getting marks along with that some explanation is required because this is an L3 question and they have asked it for 10 marks so this was about module 1 very easy not that uh, difficult these three questions 2a design D flip flop using transmission gates and explain its operation with the necessary condition on LD input okay so this was a uh, uh, in, be in between the syllabus not a direct question very tricky question D flip flop which was at the end of the module so that question they have asked it for 7 marks so yeah this was one unexpected question but uh, those who have written it well and good 2B illustrate different alternate circuit representation used in digital circuit designs with an example for each okay so this is again direct question that is for combinational logic for AND gate or gate so these are the logic circuits and gate or gate it's true table and the alternate circuit representations for them with respect to the switch if you write it for different circuits you would be getting marks okay so this was a same question which i have told you in the passing package also this was there 2c uh, it's not visible and re read it out with a neat diagram explain the physical representation of cmos inverter i told you right one question from cmos inverter they would be definitely asking that is the layout part you see here the CMOS inverter, first you draw the schematic, explain the uh, CMOS inverter condition that is 0, 1 when it is uh, the, the when the output gets inverted and the switch condition you mentioned which uh, uh, that is PMOS is on or off, NMOS is on or off like that if you write it along with the layout easily you would be getting 7 marks. Okay. So this was all about module 1. Now module 2, 3A with a neat diagram explain the working of NMOS enhancement mode transistor. Okay, so this was not, I have not provided in the uh, passing package, but uh, this they have asked it that is under various voltage conditions. That is voltage conditions with respect to the threshold voltage in the three regions of operation. That is cutoff, linear and saturation. How this NMOS enhancement mode works. Okay, if you write that in detail with the channel conditions for uh, each, uh, each, each mode under uh, different regions, if you write it uh, with the separate circuit diagrams for each step, you would be getting marks. Okay, 3B. How does the body effect influence with the threshold voltage and what are the design strategies to minimize the body effect? Okay, so this was not a direct question again, was a bit twisted question with respect to the body effect, you should be explaining it with respect to threshold voltage. Okay, so if you write this uh, six marks question, so if you write only with respect to body effect and the design strategies, if you don't write, you would be getting four marks. Okay, because the design strategies are, a, it's not a lengthy part. So if you skip it, you would be easily getting four marks if you have written this much thoroughly. 3C for an N MOSFET derive the equation. So this I have told you right in my passing package also I have included it. So this has come here. You see here for an N MOSFET derive the equation for drain current in linear and saturation region. Okay. For linear region it is ID is equal to beta into VGS minus VT minus VDS whole square divided by 2 into VDS. And for saturation it is beta by 2 into VGS minus VT the whole square. Okay. The derivation part with respect to the oxide capacitor. With respect to the charge, you should be doing it. Okay, easily you would be getting this eight marks if you do the derivation correctly. Next, 4a, explain the working of pseudo and MOS inverter. So uh, this I have told you right, alternate CMOS inverters. Any one of them would be definitely asked in the passing packet. Also, I mentioned it. So here they have asked the working of pseudo and MOS inverter and find the output voltage equation. Okay, so we have a simple derivation for that output voltage equation with respect to the threshold voltage. So that uh, they have asked one extra here. So if you had written it well and good, you would be getting marks. 4B, find the expression for V out in region C of a CMOS inverter transfer characteristic. So this they have not, they have asked indirectly, but they have asked the DC transfer characteristic only, but they have specified only for region C. Okay. So if you write the, since they have asked the L3, level 3 question, 8 marks. So if you write the complete DC characteristic inverter CMOS, it's well and good. Okay, if you write the complete answer, there are high chances that you will be getting marks. But what and all you should be writing here is first circuit diagram with the body effect. Okay, the conditions for linear saturation cutoff in uh, uh, NMOS as well as PMOS, the waveforms, all the waveforms, mystery waveforms, and all the DC transfer characteristic waveform that is uh, with all the five regions. If you mention it correctly, and only for region C, that is the output voltage would be equal to VDD by two. For that, we have one simple derivation. If you do that. Uh, if you obtain that with respect to the uh, drain current that is IDSN and IDSP. So do the comparison if you, if you have done this easily you would be getting 8 marks. Okay. 4C. Illustrate with suitable sketch 
latch up okay this is not latch up latch up phenomenon of cmos so this is also a direct question cmos latch up see they have asked it for 6 marks next from module 3 5a illustrate with neat diagram wafer processing with and selective diffusion okay so these two questions were there in the model paper they have repeated again 5b derive the equation so this is very important i have told you this would be coming so they have mentioned it derive the equation for rise time fall time and delay time okay for these three different derivations are there so this is of 8 marks so l3 question so you should be filling the pages okay 5c explain with neat diagram the process of process flow of fabricating cmos inverter using twin tub process okay so this was a complicated question i know that uh, uh, very difficult question they have asked it from the middle of the module very difficult but uh, this was not directly mentioned in the in your syllabus but uh, this should this you should be knowing okay so don't expect this question for any grace marks so i guess they won't be giving any grace marks for this question okay so if you write it well and good 6a sheet resistance that is with respect to resistance estimation they have asked it so this was not i have not included this in passing package but still if you had written it well and good sheet resistance estimation of sheet resistance they have asked it for 7 marks this is l4 question so they expect a lot of explanation for this explain the various capacitances in mos transistor again that is the gate capacitance estimation under that we have cgb cgs cgd everything if you explain it with, with the separate set of equations you would be easily getting 6 marks for this next this this the last one problem with respect to the lambda based design rules okay for the polysilicon and uh, diffusion layer they have given the channel depth here channel width okay for 100 lambda and you should be estimating the total capacitance here okay with respect to the lambda based design design rules we have a set of design design rules under that we have some formula if you are uh, can substitute that with respect to each layers diffusion and polysilicon and estimate the total capacitance with respect to the uh, gate capacitance easily you would be getting 7 marks okay so this was unexpected i know that but uh, what to do guys they have mentioned it module 4 was very easy all of them were very direct questions 7a differentiate between static and dynamic cmos circuit very easy easily you could be writing it 7b explain the pre charge and evaluate state under dynamic cmos logic so this is also a direct question so if you come uh, com explain the complete dynamic cmos logic circuit also well and good you would be getting marks design a cvsl that is cascade voltage shift logic using xor gate here okay so here the if you first explain since this is l3 so if you first explain the cvsl lo uh, logic completely okay after that based on xor gate if you draw again that is using the expression a bar b plus ab bar in the both the complementary and the functioning side in both the sides if you draw it you you'll be easily getting 7 marks okay so 8a question i have a doubt here point to be noted to 8a i think so that there is a printing mistake here they have not even mentioned uh, during uh, the evaluate the invigilators in our class also had not mentioned whether this is 2 is to 1 or 4 is to 1 because i have a doubt that since 2 is to 1 multiplexer is a very small question and using pass transistor logic they they have asked for 7 marks so i guess there is one mistake here so also this is an l3 question this should be 4 is to 1 marks okay so if this is 4 is to 1 marks there are high chances that you might be getting grace marks for this only if you had attempted it but some people uh, according to my feedback uh, in my college some people have written the answer for 4 is to 1 marks only so if you write it for 4 is to 1 marks it is well and good but if you have attempted and written for 2 is to 1 marks expect for grace marks for this question because i guess that 2 is to 1 marks they won't be asking for 7 marks okay so they have mentioned l3 question so pass transistor under that we have three different conditions one is for nmos using nmos transistors using transmission gates and using cmos logic for all these three you should be writing the 2 is to 1 marks using ptl okay if you write it well and good 8b draw and explain the layout diagram of two input nand gate again direct question the layout formation of two input nand gate if you draw it six marks you would be getting along with some explanation of the layout about how the layout is formed diffusion and polysilicon layer how the transistor gets formed how many number of transistors are formed in the layout everything easily if you mention you would be getting six marks 8c again the direct question design a schematic and layout for the given expression using euler path okay i have told you right one question from euler's graph would be definitely asked so first draw the schematic for this and based on the schematic draw the euler path along with some few points explanation okay so you would be getting 7 marks if you have written complete explanation but if you have written only the schematic as well as the graph only those things so there are very less chance that you would be getting full marks okay 
they might be giving you five to six months. So let's get to module five, nine A, with appropriate need diagram of two inverter bistable element. I told you right in my passing package also I mentioned it. This they would be definitely asking it. See, they have asked it. So this is a direct question. Detail of VTC that is voltage transfer characteristic plot is there and potential energy analogy. So both for both we have different plots in my weed concept video also I have mentioned it. If you had written it with the proper explanation, you would be getting seven marks. 9b explain the operation of sr latch so this also i have mentioned it in my passing package but they have mentioned it with respect to two input cmos nand gates okay so this is a nand based sr latch so this also i have already mentioned it and they have given it in the along with the switch level diagram switch level diagram means uh, when, uh, where are the pmos or nmos transistors are on or off okay that you should be mentioning also if you write the in the timing diagram also if you write it whether uh, in logic high it will be on and in logic low, that is logic zero, it would be off. That if you write the timing diagram along with the on state and off state condition, there are high chances that you would be getting marks. Okay. 9C, with the appropriate diagrams, explain the clocked JK latch. Again, you see here, all these three questions are from the first chapter of module five only. Okay. That is sequential MOS logic circuits. So most of the students, I guess, have attempted this one because the second chapter, that is the 10th question, all these three were from the structure design and testing that is the second part of module 5 so all these three questions were a very difficult one and i i had not covered it in my conceptual videos also i know it only one question that is 10a was a direct question and uh, i mentioned it in my passing package also that is what is structure design strategy factors that is modularity regularity and locality one more we have that is hierarchy so each of them if you explain it in detail you would be getting seven marks so distinguish between self test and built in test with examples six marks 10C, explain with neat diagram, gate array design flow. So for this also one separate explanation is there. So I couldn't do it because uh, I didn't had uh, time to do it. So, so sorry for that guys. I didn't cover that part of the chapter. So if you had attempted 9A, B, C, because these three questions were directly from the first chapter, sequential MOS logic circuits, you would be getting marks. So my conclusion and my analysis is that this paper was not that tough. Again, till now, the two subjects embedded and VLSI, were very easy because uh, you see here most of the questions are, were multiple times repeated i mentioned it in my passing package also they have repeated the same thing okay so this was my analysis guys hope you got some uh, idea about how your paper is going to go and please mention down in the comments about whether you are going to pass fail or whether you are going to get good marks please comment down your opinions okay it is very very valuable to us so please do support us guys subscribe to our channel subscribing is a must like this video Thank you.